guys, it's Victoria, and today I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut a tabletop clock. Here's a list of materials you will need, and I also linked them below in the description of this video. The first step is to create the design. For inspo, I check out Pinterest, and I save some of my favorite options. Then when I have an idea of what I want the design to look like, I mock it up in Photoshop. Next, I need to create my laser cutter file, and I do that in Adobe Illustrator. To skip the file creation, fast forward to 827 of this video. I also included a link in the description where you can download my clock file for free. Alright, so I have Adobe Illustrator open, and this is what our final files are going to look like. And I'm going to show you how I created all of these parts of the design. On the left here, we have our clock face, which is going to be printed on plywood. And all the red lines are going to be cut, and the blue lines are going to be scored. And to the right is the numbers and the dashes of the clock that are going to be printed on thin black acrylic and then glued on top of the scored parts here. And down here we have the clock base, which is going to be printed on thick black acrylic. And to the right, this is going to be a black border that's going to be printed on thin black acrylic and then also glued on top of the clock face. And these are the final dimensions that everything turned out, and I'll also include a link in the description that has these listed out. First, I'm creating a circle that is seven and a half inches, and then I create a rectangle that will fit inside the base of the clock. Next, I'm selecting both objects and center aligning them. Now I'm moving up the rectangle, and with the cut tool, I'm deleting the two top anchor points and then deleting that top line. Next, I create two anchor points where I want to cut the bottom of the circle, and then I delete that piece. Now I just need to connect the rectangle to the circle. Now I'm creating the hole that the clock mechanism will fit through and aligning it horizontally and vertically with the clock face. So now I'm changing my stroke color to blue so I can create the score lines. I'm going to highlight my score lines and my cut lines and I'm going to go over to align and I'm going to center it horizontally. Now I'm going to copy that dash and paste it in place and then I'm going to drag it to the bottom. So this is where the 12 is going to be and then this is where the 6 is going to be. Now I am selecting both of these dashes and then grouping them together. Now I'm double clicking on the rotate tool over here on the toolbar. And then for the angle, I'm doing 30 degrees, and then copy. And then I'm going to keep double clicking on that rotate tool and hitting copy. So for the thin dash marks, I'm clicking on my rectangle tool and typing in those dimensions. So now I'm taking the thin dash mark and I'm aligning it horizontally with the big dash mark. Then I'm going to copy and paste it in place and bring it down in line with the six dash mark. And now I'm grouping those two thin dash marks together and then going back to that rotate tool and then doing 6%. And then I'm going to copy and then I'm going to keep double clicking and copying. Now with my direct select tool, I'm going to delete the skinny dash marks that are on top of the thicker ones. The font I'm using is Futura Medium, and the font size is 44.129 points. And now I'm going to create a circle with my blue stroke that's about the same size as the 12. And I'm going to place it underneath the 12 dash. And then I'm going to copy and paste it in place and then bring it down to the six dash spot. And now I'm grouping those two circles together and then coming over here to my rotate tool, double clicking it. And with 30%, I'm clicking on copy. And then I'm gonna keep double clicking on that rotate tool and hitting copy. Now these are all the spots where the numbers are going to go. So I'm going to type out my numbers and then try to center them within the circles. Now that I have the numbers where I want them, using my select tool, I'm going to delete the circles behind them. 
Now I'm just making some minor adjustments to the spacing. Now I'm going to change all the numbers from fills to strokes just because we're going to have the Glowforge score these numbers. Now I'm going to select all of the numbers. I'm going to go up to type and create outlines. And for the Glowforge, I'm going to save it as an SVG. And for decimal places, I'm choosing three and I'm keeping all three of these selected. And now we want to create the number cutouts and the dashes. And I'm going to copy this whole clock and paste it in place and then move it over. And I'm going to delete the cut parts because we don't need these. And I'm going to highlight all the numbers and dashes and change them to red since they're going to be cut. So I'm going to select all the numbers and all the tick marks and I'm going to go up to Object, Path, Offset Path. And then the offset is going to be 0.019 inches. Now with that offset path selected, I'm going to lock it. So I'm going to go up to Object, Lock, Selection. Now I'm going to use my Direct Select tool and I'm going to highlight over all the numbers and all the dashes. And then I'm going to Delete. So now all we have are those offset paths. And then we drag it over and place it on top of the scored areas. You can see that the cut lines are quite a bit bigger than the scored lines, which is what we want because we don't want those score lines showing beneath the cut parts. So now I'm just going to delete the clock face and then I'm resizing my artboard and then saving this as an SVG for laser cutting. And now we need to create the border. And I'm going to create a circle that is 7.5 inches. And I'm just placing it over our clock face circle here. And now I'm going to go up to Object, Path, Offset Path. And for the offset, I'm going to do negative 0 0.1389. Now I'm creating anchor points and deleting the parts of the circle that will make the border meet the top of the base. Next, I delete the clock face that we have in the background and close up the border. Alright, so now the border is ready to be cut out and I just need to save the SVG. Okay, so now we just need to make the stand that the clock is going to be placed into. And this is what's going to be printed on that thick black acrylic. So first I'm going to create a rectangle that is 2.55 inches wide by 0.1899 inches high. And this is going to be the slit that the clock is going to fit into. And now I'm going to create the outer rectangle which is going to be 5.6 three seven six inches wide by one point seven two nine six inches high okay now I'm just going to select both of those and then align them horizontally and then vertically and now it's ready for saving once I've known my file it's time to laser cut it on my Glowforge all right now I have the Glowforge app open and I'm gonna click on the plus sign and then upload. And then we're gonna upload the clock face first. So I'm gonna click on our clock face SVG file. And for the material, I'm gonna choose thick maple plywood. So I'm gonna click on the first one here, which has our tick marks. And I'm gonna choose score and then high quality. And then for the second layer, which is the numbers, we also wanna score these. So I'm gonna click on score at the top. And then again, I'm gonna choose high quality. In our third layer, we want to cut. So I'm going to leave cut selected and I'm going to leave proof grade cut selected. And I'm going to go up here to the top right and click print. So now I have the thin black acrylic in the Glowforge and we're going to laser cut the numbers and dashes and then also the border that's going to go on the outside of the clock. Material, I'm going to choose medium black acrylic. So I'm going to go to upload again. And I ended up grouping them all together so I'm not wasting a bunch of material. And now we're going to upload the border. For the cut settings, I'm choosing a speed of 157, full power, and one pass. I'm doing that for both layers. Now I have 
have the thick black acrylic in the Glowforge and we need to print the clock stand. So I'm gonna go up to the plus sign and then upload and then clock stand. And then for the material, I'm gonna choose thick black acrylic. And then for the settings, I'm gonna click on the little arrow here next to proof grade cut. And for speed, I'm gonna choose 100 and then full power. And I'm clicking off and then going up to print. Finally, it's time to assemble the clock. That's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll also include my referral link in the description where you can get anywhere from $125 to $500 off at Glowforge if you are in the market for one. And I'll get paid that amount as well. All right, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.